Hello watch enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. For a lot of us, homage watches to historical and often more valuable pieces are a moot point. On the one hand they let us enjoy that watch which we might not be able to afford, or which we simply can't find, yet on the other they're often regarded as heavily unoriginal, derivative and a distraction from other available options for the same money. Today I'd like to show you a watch which I think perhaps sidesteps this issue by being an homage while still contributing to horology. The Crepas Megamatic, a Spanish-designed, Swiss-made dive watch which recreates perhaps my favourite dive watch of all time. This was, though, a dive watch which unfortunately never reached fruition. Before we get to that inspiration, which may or may not have already occurred to you, what is the Crepas Megamatic? Well, it's the product of Spanish brand Crepas, a brand name created from the acronym for Compañía Relojera Especializada para Actividades Subacuáticas, or Specialized Watchmaker for Subaquatic Activities. Their focus is in the production of deep sea dive watches with clear historical precedent, whether inspired by past models or being directly modelled upon them. This has previously taken them down the route of, amongst other things, recreating the Omega Seamaster 1000. In light of all the various dive watches produced in the past, the Megamatic seems a heck of an oddball. Produced entirely from brushed 316L stainless steel, it has a comparably flat 13.5mm thick case which sits extremely well on the wrist thanks to a short 46.5mm lug-to-lug -lug measurement. Still, it's not exactly small at 44mm at the bezel, and a staggering 55mm across that enormous 10mm crown. So why is this watch such an unusual shape? Well, this is a timepiece inspired by a true oddity of the diving world, the Omega Seamaster 1000 Quartz. To understand this, it's time for a bit of history. First though, if you're enjoying this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Also, if you want access to our podcasts, reviews, and other articles, head over to watchchronicler.com. To always be aware of watches you deserve to know about, follow us on Instagram for photos and, of course, important announcements. After testing their saturation diver in 1968, Omega launched the Seamaster 600m Ploprof and the Seamaster 1000m Le Grand. Used by the Cousteau team and known for being entirely impenetrable to helium, these were some of the most accomplished and brilliantly engineered dive watches ever made. However, powered by the 1000 series Omega automatic movements, Omega was aware that these watches were not part of the revolution rapidly enveloping the Swiss watch industry, electricity. Something we should remember is that whilst the Ploprof was undoubtedly a watch to show its true capabilities in the 1970s, it was designed in the 60s. Consequently, it seems unsurprising that Omega were keen to update it if they were to add a new movement. In this regard, the case grew a familiarly large, but now flatter design, as well as the option of a screwed case back, even though this remained a saturation diver. The original models could only be opened from the front. The bezel also developed to be easier to grip, whilst Omega tried two different new dial variations. The hands, you could say, were the greatest change, and took the large plongeur-style hands to a new level, with an arrow for an hour hand and an immense orange minute hand. Unfortunately, the movements fitted were as big a failure as the new design was a triumph. First, Omega tried the F300Hz tuning fork movement, seen in other models in their range, before using their ultra-high-end Mega Quartz, accurate to one second per month. Problematically, neither could maintain anything like their needed accuracy in cold temperatures, nor would they keep a charge for long enough. Consequently, Omega shelved the project and with it, the Ploprof altogether. Only two examples, one of which was purely a display example, are confirmed to exist. The Megamatic combines these two watches into a sort of final Ploprof, which you can actually wear and use, with details taken from each, from the bezel to the humongous hands. But aside from allowing one to enjoy a design created by the greatest minds at the time in the industry, and which would have been lost to history, is the Crepas Megamatic actually any good? In a word, yes. I've already presented you the case, but I'd like to put the spotlight on the details. The brushing, whilst simple, is extremely neat and consistent, whilst the facets on every side avoid any sharp edges. Around the back, as was seen on the Mega Quartz version of the Seamaster, we see a screwed case back which is beautifully detailed, but also grips the wrist due to the deep strakes. This is crucial for such a heavy watch. Speaking of ergonomics, it's worth noting that, like the original Seamaster, you can choose which side to have the crown, as well as whether you prefer these hands or the more common plongeur-style hands. 
The dial colour is also a matter of preference between the historically correct black and this dark blue item. Something you will have noticed is the presence of a helium escape valve on the case side. This of course wasn't on the original, although given such watch's propensity for trapping water inside the case during saturation dives when the crown was used, it's probably sensible for the new watch to have the valve. In any case, it's well finished and flush with the rest of the flank. Inevitably, your eye will have been drawn to the enormous crown on the side of this watch. Curiously, this is one of the entirely crepass designed parts of the watch, and features the rather charming propeller logo. In brushed and blasted steel, it also matches the case and delivers an unbeatable grip to wind and set the watch. For a watch which is £800 new, the action is pretty much flawless as it screws in, although of course the size helps this considerably. This matches the bezel very well, which has 120 clicks and lines up absolutely perfectly on this example. The bezel insert is ceramic, excellently finished, and as you'll see, it's fully luminous too. My only complaint about the case is that whilst Crepas present the crown placement as a matter of choice, unless you wear the watch on your right wrist, it simply wouldn't be wearable with the crown at 3 o'clock. Under a 4mm anti-reflective sapphire crystal, this watch has a stunningly effective dial with just enough to be fully legible whilst avoiding overcomplication. The markers are simply painted, but are impeccably neat whilst the printing appears glossy over the matte surface. With a similar sense of simplicity, the date window is outlined, and it should be noted that the date wheel is unique for either crown arrangement, since it would appear the wrong way up otherwise. Overall, it seems ironic that this watch is an homage, because in truth, I can't imagine a dial with fewer affectations. It really is pure functionality. But you see, the homage aspect of this watch is a double-edged sword. Yes, it allows me to enjoy a watch I'll never be able to buy, but it also means that this rather accomplished design will be put to good use as a dive watch rather than a museum piece. You see, over the last decade, Crepas watches have been used by some saturation divers, and so these watches are relied upon in a way which seems very much suitable for such tools. In this environment, the anti-slip case back, thick sapphire crystal, virtually scratch-proof ceramic bezel, enormous hands and helium escape valve begin to make sense. Oh, and then there's the C3 Superluminova on the dial, hands and bezel, which can actually hold a candle to the Seiko Marine Master, thus joining an extremely small group of watches. Mechanically, this watch uses a simple but eminently serviceable ETA 2824-2 with a 38 hour power reserve and, for this example, an accuracy of plus 6 seconds per day, which I don't think is too shabby at all. I don't believe the movement is decorated, although for this price I don't see this as much of a concern. Another matter which I should address is the price and what you get for it. You see, the package which I have here is the original Kickstarter set with both dials and handsets, in addition to a Bonetto Cinturini rubber strap, steel bracelet, Marine Nationale strap, and this mesh bracelet. These can currently be found for around £1,000, although they'll likely increase in value once they all sell out, as tends to be the trend for this brand. If you want to buy one from Crepas, however, the price is about £800, including VAT, simply with the stainless steel bracelet. I won't go into too much detail here, but interestingly, this entirely solid steel bracelet uses the same kind of clasp as an Oris Aquis. So where does this watch sit amongst the dive watches we all know? Well, the quality is on par with the likes of the Oris Diver 65, although being such different watches, the comparison is difficult. The quality is definitely better than Certina or Mido, and probably a touch better than Dox's more affordable models. With that being said, a Zodiac has better dial finishing, but then again loses where the bezel action is concerned. Altogether, it holds its own pretty well against similarly priced and more expensive options, although of course the look of this watch and fit on the wrist will be a more personal choice. So what does this make the Crepes Megamatic, and why did I want to present it on Watch Chronicler? The way I see it, this is a brand which isn't made for mainstream appeal, for many, calling the Megamatic purposeful would be as far as compliments would carry, yet I think that it demonstrates how a recreation of a past watch can be a constructive exercise rather than simply an exercise in mimicry. Perhaps something to consider is that, in any case, the brands producing the best remakes on the market often aren't even related to their vintage counterparts. What do you think, though? Is the Crepas Megamatic a copy, or is it a justified recreation? Anyway, I'll conclude the video there but thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you on the channel again soon. This is Armon from WatchChronicler.com, out.